Hi, I'm Mickey Gousset. Welcome to this video on Introduction to YAML Pipeline Jobs. In this video, we are going to look at what is a job, a job versus a deployment job, the three types of jobs, and job dependencies and timeouts. Now, in this video, we are just touching the surface of jobs in Azure Pipelines, and future videos are going to dive into even more details of how jobs work. So let's start out with, what is a job? You organize your pipeline into stages and jobs. And in our previous video, we talked about stages. Now every pipeline has at least one job. And we saw that previously in that we could either specify that job or if we only had one stage and one job, you could actually leave it unspecified. Now a job is actually just a series of steps that run sequentially as a unit. So those steps are also can be tasks and a variety of other different things. So think of a job as the smallest unit of work that can be scheduled to run in a pipeline. Stated another way, a job is a collection of steps run either by an agent or on a server. Jobs can run conditionally meaning that they might depend on earlier jobs. So if you start diving into Azure Pipelines, you'll see jobs, and then you'll see deployment jobs. So let's explain a little terminology to make sure we're all on the same page. When we talk about a pipeline job, we are talking about a job that is normally used for builds and testing. It can also be used for deploying your application. However, for deploying applications, it is recommended that you use what's called the deployment job. This is a special type of job that is designed specifically to help you with deployments. Some of the benefits of a deployment job include you can get end-to-end -end deployment history across pipelines down to a specific resource and status of deployments for auditing. You can also apply a deployment strategy to define how your application is rolled out. Currently, three strategies are supported. Run once, rolling, and canary. I'll have future videos that dive into all three strategies as well as into the details of using deployment jobs. There are three types of jobs. Jobs can be of different types depending on where they run. Agent pool jobs run on an agent in an agent pool. These are the most common types of jobs. You can use a function called demands to specify what capabilities an agent must have to run the job. For example, you may require that certain software be installed on the agent. Server jobs run on Azure DevOps, either in the cloud or self-hosted. A server job does not require an agent or any target computers. At this time, there are only a few tasks that support server jobs. And finally, container jobs run in a container on an agent in the agent pool. Now before we jump into a couple of demos, I want to discuss job dependencies and timeouts. You have the ability to define dependencies between jobs in a stage. For example, you can have a job wait to run until a previous job completes. You do this using the keyword depends on. 
you also need to be aware of how long a job can run. You can control this using timeouts. A timeout is simply a limit on how long a job can run which prevents things like runaway jobs or hung jobs. You do this using the keyword timeout in minutes. Some things to be aware of if you specify or don't specify the timeout value. If you specify a timeout value of zero, it means the following. If you are using self-hosted build servers, the job could run forever. It just won't ever stop. If you're using Microsoft hosted agents in Azure, then the job can run for a maximum of 360 minutes for a public project, public repository, and 60 minutes for a private project or private repository. After that, the job will be immediately killed. So, let's look at some examples of jobs and how we can specify dependencies and timeouts. We looked at dependencies previously with stages and it's going to be very similar with jobs. So here we are in our team project in Azure DevOps. And remember, this is a public team project with a public repository. That allows me to take advantage of having some extra free pipelines. And you can see in my repo, I've created a folder called 006 playing with jobs. This is where I'll be putting my different files. And here I have my YAML file for the first demo that I'm going to, to do for you. Now, if we look at this YAML file, we can see that it's being triggered manually. We're running this on a Linux image and we've defined a stage. And then in that stage, we've defined two different jobs. We have job one, which has just one step, which is right out J1. And then we have job two. And you'll notice that in job two, we've defined that job two depends on job one. This means that job two will not run until job one is finished. So they're going to run sequentially. So over here in pipelines, I've defined this build and I'm going to run this pipeline. And what we should see when we run this pipeline is that job one is going to be queued up to run, but job two is just going to sit and wait until job one finishes. So they will only run one at a time. And now that job one is finished, job two is now in line to pick up an agent so that it can run. And now we can see that job two is running. So we can use the depends on statement to specify a dependency between two jobs so that one job doesn't start until the other, other job is finished. Now let's look at an example of parallel jobs. So here we've defined our YAML file. And again, we have a trigger of none, so it's going to be manual. And you'll notice that we define a pool at the pipeline level, but we're also defining pools at the job level. You have the ability to define a pool at the pipeline stage or job level. And job will override stage, stage will override pipeline. So in this case, even though we have a pool defined here, each of the individual jobs is going to use whatever pool was defined for it. Again, we have the one stage. But then we have our three jobs. And you'll notice the only thing we, different is there is no depends on statement. Therefore, if you have the available agents, these jobs will run in parallel. So you'll see I've got a job that I'm calling Windows, which is running on a Windows image. And we're just echoing out hello from Windows. 
Then I have a job that's running on a Mac OS image. And then I have a job that's running on a Linux image. And because I did not specify any dependencies, if I run the build or run the pipeline related to this job, it will execute all three jobs at the same time. So if I come back over to my 006 playing with jobs pipeline folder, I can select my parallel jobs pipeline that I've created and I can say run this pipeline. And what we should see is it queues them all up at the same time and they will all start running as soon as an agent becomes available. But they're running in parallel. You can see the Mac and the Linux are actually still waiting for their agents. So in this case, the demo didn't quite show what I wanted due to the uncontrollable nature of when agents are potentially released. But in general, if you have multiple jobs that you've not specified a dependency between and you have the available pipelines, those jobs will run um, parallel. Now, just like we could with stages, we can fan out and fan in with jobs. So here is yet another sample YAML file where we've defined just one stage and we have job A, which will execute. Then we have job B, which depends on job A. So B won't run until A executes. And job C also depends on job A. So what should happen is job A should run when A is finished, B and C should run at the same time, and then you'll notice that job D depends on B and C completing. So here we have job A running, we fan out to jobs B and C, and then we fan back in to job D. So let's go back under pipelines and let's take this pipeline and run it. So we have A, B, C, and D. And unlike the stages, which had a little more of a graphical view that showed you the fan out and fan in, here we just see all the jobs under this particular stage. Usually acquiring an agent happens pretty quickly. Sometimes there can be a few seconds wait. So we will just wait and see what happens. There we go. So you can see that A ran. Now B and C are being queued up at the same time. Notice that D is still gray. D is not running. B and C are now running together at the same time. So we have fanned out to B and C. Notice that B finished and C finished, but D didn't start until both of them finished. And then finally we will have D fan back in and we'll execute. And if we go back and look at the trip report then we can see that 
all of our jobs completed successfully. I have one final demo I want to show you and that's what happens when a job times out. So here we've defined a YAML file where we have one stage and one job and we've defined the timeout for that job to be one minute. So if the job doesn't complete in one minute it's considered bad and we want it to stop. Now what I've done is I've created I have one step in here and it's a task that runs some PowerShell. And all this PowerShell does is it writes out going to sleep, it goes to sleep for three minutes, and then it wakes up. Then it writes waking up. Now, this is going to go to sleep for three minutes, which should go over our timeout of one minute, and we should be able to see the results of what happens when you trigger a timeout. So what we're going to do is take our job, or take our pipeline, and we're going to run this pipeline and we'll see the job gets queued up and what should happen is once the job starts running it should hit that PowerShell task and after a minute the job should time out. So it's gonna seem like a really long time but we're just gonna sit here and watch this run and see what happens. You can see the inline PowerShell has started running it's going to sleep it wrote out going to sleep and now it's in that three minute sleep loop. So we should see in about less than a minute it should time out and give us some kind of message. Remember by default if you're using self-hosted agents and you don't specify the timeout value or you set it to zero then jobs are going to run forever. If you're using Microsoft hosted agents and you have a public project and a public repo, you get 360 minutes before it times out. And private projects and private repos get 60 minutes. Okay, there you go. You can see the job running on the agent, hosted agent, ran longer than the maximum time of one minute because we specified a time, timeout of one minute. And it's got a link for more information, which will talk about the timeouts. But you can see we get back a message saying there was an issue. You'll notice that the, the build failed. And if we drill in, we can view the error message related to why the build failed. And it says that the job ran longer than it was expected and therefore that task got canceled. And the whole job was canceled because it ran longer than expected. So in this video, we looked at what is a job, a job versus a deployment job, three types of jobs, and job dependencies and timeouts. Thanks for watching.